Hello everyone. In this video, I will go through this paper Beyond USB, Optimal and Efficient Contextual Bandits with Regression Oracles by Dylan Foster and Alexander Racklin. So this is a state-of-the-art algorithm for contextual bandits, uh, which most importantly can convert most machine learning pipelines, which is supervised machine learning pipelines, into a contextual bandit pipeline with very minimal changes. And this has mathematical property that it's optimal uh, as well as it performs well in practice. So let's start with what the contextual bandit problem is. So the contextual bandit problem is defined as follows. So it's a game between nature and learner that goes in T steps. At each time step T, nature first selects a context XT coming from a set X that is known to the learner a priori. And note this XT can actually be set by an adversary. Uh, so the adversary can uh, potentially be adaptive, but for simplicity, we'll assume this adversary is uh, non-adaptive. Uh, after observing the context XT, the learner chooses an action AT from the set A. Uh, and then the nature returns a loss, which is LT of AT, that is sampled from a distribution that is uh, dependent on time step T and the action AT condition on the context xt. So you can imagine xt to be some uh, user features that you see online and action at to be the choice uh, that the system takes. So for instance, in a typical machine learning system such as recommender systems, xt is typically like user features and at is which content that you want to recommend to this user. And the loss lt of at typically depends on users engagement on this particular uh, action 80 that the system suggested. Okay, so the main assumptions that we have in this uh, setup are two. First, we assume that the learner has access to a value function f. Uh, we can think of f to be a large family, potentially infinite. Uh, you can think of it to be a set of all neural nets or such as all decision trees and so on, which can model the mean loss well. So the Kind of F here we think is the set of all machine learning models or architectures that you typically would try in a supervised learning model. And second thing that we assume is that of realizability. This means that there's a policy F star within this function class F that can exactly model the mean loss for every context. In particular, for every context X and an action A, the function f star of x comma a is exactly coinciding with the expected loss of a given x comma a. So this may seem like a strong assumption a priori, but in practice this just means that you have a function f within f star within this f that is actually a very good model for all the realized uh, sequences that you see. So even though for proving theory the paper assumes that this needs to be exact, for most practical applications, as long as this F star is good enough, meaning that this is the lower bound, uh, this is something you may want to try. And as in any contextual bandit algorithm, the goal here is to minimize the regret. So to define regret more formally, let's define pi f of x which to be the best action under policy f for context x. In particular, it's the minimum, uh, minimum value f of x comma e for all action A in A. And then regret is just defined as the total loss uh, accumulated by our online algorithm uh, with that of the total loss uh, accumulated by the best function class F star within this big uh, set F. Uh, okay, so now uh, let's see what this practical algorithm that is based on regression is. So as I said in the beginning, uh, the goal of this particular paper is to say that we can convert any existing supervised learning algorithm plus a recurrent training based system. So essentially this, uh, this supervised learning model needs to be trained very often or every so often on newly occurring data. So as long as you have these two properties, uh, you will be able to convert that to an optimal contextual bandit system with minimal effort which is a very good and desirable property since most contextual bandit algorithms in the past differ significantly from a pipeline that we typically use for supervised learning, which makes uh, productionizing of contextual bandit systems very hard. 
whereas this particular algorithm takes a step forward in rectifying it and tries to reuse most of the pipelines uh, and the qualities of a supervised learning system with uh, that of a recurrent training based system and just adds a different sampling structure. And mathematically, what do we assume, right? Ma mathematically, we assume that we have a supervised learning oracle that provides the following guarantee. So if you take uh, the difference between y hat of t, which is the prediction of an oracle with the true label yt, which is the actual label. And if you take their mean square error and then sum it over t steps. So this is the total loss obtained by the supervised learning oracle. Uh, and you take that and you do you take the difference between that and the best function class within f right so the means total mean square error of the best function f uh, if you take their difference to be bounded by something called as the regret of the square cb of t so you can think of this term here to say that the supervised learning oracle is actually very very competitive in the mean square error sense to that of the best function in your function class so if you take f to be the set of all neural nets, which is like a very, very powerful representation class, uh, we are saying that this regression oracle needs to come very close to that. So typically you want to assume this to be something like uh, square root of t, or if you divide this by t, you want this to go to zero as the number of time step goes to infinity. So if you assume such a regression oracle, then the main theorem states that the regret of the square CB algorithm with probability at least one minus delta, achieves an regret of square root k times t times the regret of this uh, regression oracle, uh, which is this term here essentially is the dominating term. And if this regret of uh, regret of the square uh, the supervised learning oracle is like say a constant, then this thing is almost the best possible you can achieve in a contextual bandit system. And we if we know how to minimize uh, the square loss of a powerful function class, then we can uh, minimize the total regret of the contextual bandit system. So this is a very, very strong theorem and it's optimal in the sense that um, if you can give a, get a good supervised learning oracle, this will give you the best possible contextual bandit regret. And so, okay, so now let's look at what the algorithm itself looks like, right? So the square CB algorithm looks as follows. So it takes as input a learning rate, which is gamma. Typically, this would be an hyperparameter that you would tune for your particular application. And then you have an exploration parameter mu, which is again a hyperparameter that you would tune for your application and a regression oracles SQ of ALK. So this is your online learning system. So for instance, uh, if it's a neural net and you want to use something like SGD, uh, this oracle would just take all the previous uh, actions and just uh, do backprop on your neural net to find the next best uh, function class that fits the data, right? So now you have t steps. At each step, you first receive this uh, context xt. Uh, the action, uh, you to decide which action to play, what you first do is you take this, uh, you invoke for each action a, you invoke the supervised learning oracle to get its prediction, right? So this is essentially this uh, equates to just getting uh, Predict point-wise predictions for each of the actions uh, to get its estimated uh, quantity or label, right? And then once you get the label, uh, in a typical supervised learning setting, you just pick the action that maximizes y hat of t comma a or that minimizes y hat of t comma a. If it, these are losses here. On the other hand, here we sort of trade off exploration with exploitation. So how do we do that? So you take let b t be the best greedy action, which is the minimum action A that minimizes y hat t of A. And then you define a probability uh, space over the actions that look at, looks as follows, right? So for each action A that is not the best action, you take one over mu plus gamma times how far away it is from the best action. So this sort of resembles epsilon greedy type of approach, except that here with uh, in the epsilon arm of the epsilon greedy, you actually uh, scale it with how far away you are from the best action. But if you're very close to the best action, you would want to explore it more. Whereas if you're, uh, sorry, if you're very close to the best action, you would want to explore it more. Uh, on the other hand, if you're very close to the, uh, if you're far away from the best action, then this term should be smaller, right? And um, 
Okay, so now once you define this probability space, uh, you sample the action AT from PT. So uh, you can see that the, the way this is defined, this sums up to one, and you select the best action AT from PT. And then that's the action you would play, and you'll observe the loss LT of AT. And then once you've observed this loss, you feed, you append this to your data set. So XT of AT, XT is the context that you got, AT is the action that you played, and LT of AT is the label that you observed. And then uh, you log this in your training data. And in the next recurrent step or the next recurrent training of your supervised learning oracle, it would uh, include these in its training data and continue to retrain it. This algorithm is just that simple. It's just, it almost resembles your supervised learning setup with this extra sampling step that is defined in this, um, in this step here, right? Okay, so then uh, let's look at some key properties of this. The main property here is that most of the heavy lifting is actually abstracted out into the oracle, which means that you can separate two parts, the function fitting part and the exploration part. And essentially the key part of contextual bandit is about exploration. And instead of reinventing the wheel on the function fitting part, this algorithm tells us how to use the function fitting part efficiently and optimally. And the second thing that you would notice actually is that this algorithm is not at all optimistic in the sense that uh, it doesn't use any form of UCB, which is reflected in the name of the paper as well. And this significantly departs from traditional bandit algorithms. And in fact, this discussion in the paper about how UCB is not the optimal strategy when your contexts are es essentially adversarial. So in some sense, UCB, which is commonly used in practice, is actually a non-optimal algorithm. Okay, so now how would one use this in practice, right? So in your setup, the first thing you would want to do is you first formulate the problem as a regression or a classification problem. Although in this video, we primarily viewed this as a regression problem, the same uh, exact uh, analogous algorithm can be used to classification problems as well. And then you develop your supervised learning model that achieves the best accuracy. So this is how your typical ML workflow would look like, right? So this is the step where you would do things like feature engineering, uh, hyperparameter optimization, uh, any architectural improvements, whether it's uh, do you want to use decision trees, neural nets, what type of architectures within neural nets, transformers, etc. And then uh, at deployment time, uh, you do two things. First, you make sure that uh, at predicting time, this is a recurrent function, recurrent model, which means that Every so often, once you get a new batch of data, you retrain the model. Uh, so this is again very standard in many big machine learning systems. And second is you use the square CB sampler that takes the outputs of two and then uh, constructs the probability distribution and then samples from that distribution. Uh, whereas in a typical ML workflow, you use a greedy sampling, right? So you depart from greedy sampling and then you use this a square CB sampling method, which which we saw here. And this typically is a very simple uh, change, right? This is like a few lines of code that you would change in your machine learning workflow, and it's pretty straightforward. And that's it. And with this one small trick of using a square CB sampling as opposed to greedy sampling, you've converted any regular ML workflow to an optimal contextual bandit workflow. So the next time you would want to try a contextual bandit or want to trade off explore exploit in your big production systems, you don't have to change everything and you can just use this one extra sampling trick and you can start to profit. Thank you.